between manifestation and prepping. You know, sometimes we like to think, uh, or some people do think, that if you prepare for negative situations, that you are physically manifesting something bad to happen. Like if you are preparing, you have food in storage, you have water, you have some extra fuel for whatever. If you have extra money in the bank because you want to put some aside for a rainy day, is that actually manifesting a rainy day? I would have to say no. That is my personal perception and personal belief that if we take care of the bad things that possibly could happen, then you don't have to worry about it. You don't have to dwell on the, uh, on the negative. And then the positive kind of tends to take care of itself. Kind of like uh, my wife, Jill, mentioned a minute ago, we have an acquaintance of ours that uh, he came to visit, and he has a little thing that he pulled out uh, to protect his wife or himself in trouble. Sometimes I carry around, and often do, uh, karambits, these uh, very special sort of knives in my pocket that I've trained with for many, many, many years. I don't think I'm going to stab somebody. I don't walk out into the public thinking, well, if somebody jumps me today, I sure am going to slice them up. I, I've, I've never thought that. I do have them because I know how to use them well. And if anyone, I thought that my life was threatened enough, as long as they did not have a gun, and they were standing really close to me, uh, I'm not manifesting bad. I'm just prepared for it. I don't want to think about it. I know that if somebody, uh, if they were approaching us in a dark alley or a dark parking lot, that my life was uh, in such a predicament where I felt like, well, looks like I'm going to have to go ahead and use these skills. I'm ready for it. Uh, I don't go to bed at night thinking, oh, God, I can't wait to use this. I've been training with these things for you know, 10 years. Uh, or I don't put food aside and water aside to go, God, I sure hope we get snowed in for a couple of weeks so I can use all this food. Uh, I sure hope the world collapses tomorrow so I can use all this storage I have over here. Yeah, I don't, you don't think that way. At least I don't. I think if you do think that way, you start to manifest problems. And I think that it's easy to manifest problems. Like we have enough problems already. We have enough problems working on all of our inner problems. We have enough problems worrying about all the outside influences affecting our lives and brainwashing us and making us think our, some of our thoughts are our own and in fact they're not. I mean, we have a lot of issues, a lot of issues, and we need to take care of the negative, prepare, but not dwell. We got to live our life. We got to do our inner work. Focus on our core. Focus on our people that we love and express and manifest love and not manifest disaster, famine, all of that craziness. What do you think, Gil? <laughs> this is a big topic and a very hot one indeed. Uh, there's a lot of buzz around the whole subject of manifestation, preparation, uh, what, where is the point of balance uh, between these two? And um, I will say this, um, when it comes to manifestation and preparation, it is essential first to know and to establish um, what center of consciousness and energy are you operating from and therefore manifesting from and are you fueling energetically your reality in general? The issue that we're facing here is that we are constantly manifesting and creating, operating from and feeding from and to our reality from a center that is hidden from us. We go unconscious and 
then things occur in our lives that we can be surprised. How did I manifest this? I was not focusing on that. No. But what's your unconscious doing? What are you thinking unconsciously? Are you aware of your thought processes? Are you aware of the center of energy that you're operating from? Or you just go about your day, dealing with your day-to-day -day activities, doing the best you can. So, or are you consciously understanding the external core that is the center of manifestation and creation here as humanity has been always, and do you understand that you have an alternative to that? If you understand that, now you can start to shift and transition and begin to transform your manifestations. Now, to prepare is very important. Why? Because we have a human body and we need to take care of it. It has needs and that has to be met, for sure. However, we're not just that. We have other inner and higher realms of self, of intelligence, of consciousness and energy from which we can operate. The question is, do we know it? Most of us don't. Today we come to a new era in which all of that is starting to be revealed, exposed and discovered by us. So it is essential, I would say, in exercising preparation. Let's put one principle at work here. Wherever you are focused, energy begins to move in that direction. So if you remain focused on the preparation for a doomsday, let's say, in whatever form it comes for you, in your mind, uh, and you stay focused on it, indeed, you're beginning to move energy in that direction. And in some form or another, you most probably, even though it's not a necessity, but probably you will manifest that. Um, we have to also look at a collective reality that's already manifested, that we're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. And that is already a consensus coming from the external center on which we all operate as humans in survival. That's the energetics of survival. And we're dealing with those circumstances that are constantly happening and recycling. For that, we have to be prepared. But if we withdraw, disengage the focus from that, yet not ignoring it, not turning a blind eye, Another one, in other words, not going stupid about it, yet shift our focus to the internal core, which is the deeper heart and higher mind, which is where our soul and spirit lives, our core consciousness, and begin to operate and view our reality from there. Now we're beginning to shift. Now, that takes time. And the element of time here is very important to understand because it's a... It's a factor that we all have to understand, and there are many frustrations around that. So it takes time to shift your center and to shift the core from which you manifest reality. It may take weeks, months, years, and even lifetimes. It matters not. What matters is your choice in exercising your free will. So I would say, prepare. Absolutely. Have the food storage. Do whatever you need to protect yourself and your family. Absolutely. But be very cautious and very clear. Where is your focus? And I would recommend to shift the center of consciousness and energy to the internal core, since it is our original and authentic core. The external core is an imposter. It presents itself to be our main core when it is not. That's why we are dealing with circumstances that are very unpleasant to us many times. And then we wonder, how come? How do we get out of that mess? How do we get out of that trap? Well, that's how. You have to be clear. What is your core of energetic and conscious creation? Are you a... Are you a recipient of what's already created for you by the false external core? Because if you are, you have to understand that you're not in control. You have to understand that you're a puppet and those that are holding the remote controls are not your hands. And you have to understand that that's our social program. If you want to hold also the remote control, 
as an individual, I would recommend very warmly, and there are ways to do that, to shift to your internal core and move all of your belief systems, all of your trust, all of your focus into that inner resource and begin to operate and feel the reality from there. Don't expect for it to happen overnight. Be patient, it's a practice and it is a new practice. And I will stop here because I can go on and on and on. Well, you know, if we move our thoughts from being focused on the negative, because so many people do, I think you end up manifesting all sorts of things. So if you're manifesting, uh, some people think, well, God, I gotta go home and see see the old ball and chain when I get off work. I mean, you hear that. You know, guys hear it all the time. Other guys talking about their girlfriends or wives. I've never quite understood that, but you hear it. So they're manifesting a, a, in themselves already a negative feeling just but to go home. You know, just from driving from work back home, they're already manifesting bad uh, feelings for when they walk in. Instead, uh, I love how you put it, is go inside of yourself and fuel the, the inner joy, the inner core. Fuel that reality and make it better. Instead of, ugh, gotta go see that ball and chain. Instead of, I can't wait to go home and hug those wings, baby. Let's just fly all night long. Let's go. Let's just go spread our wings and go into our intellectual pursuits, go into our conversations about our day. Let's hold hands. Let's kiss under the stars. Uh, you know, all of those things that just let your mind and heart fly. Just, hey, instead of thinking, oh, i got to go home and see that ball and chain, where you just wrap yourself and your mind and heart in a cage and you just dump yourself down on the floor. That's what most people do. And most people live in these fears and anxieties and they wrap themselves up all of these things and they manifest that out into the world because they have... Uh, prickish type personalities and start manifesting from those uh, negative thoughts. And then all of a sudden they're, all right, well I have these negative feelings. I don't like this person. I don't like that guy. I'm jealous of him. I'm jealous of her. I, yeah, so they start manifesting all of these bad things and then all of a sudden they're a prick. And then nobody wants to be around them or people have to pretend to be around them because they have some advantage or something. You know, it's just all those stupid games that we play. So if we manifest, uh, it's easy to manifest those things um, without going into the, the core. You, you just bad, you just pass right over the core. It takes much more work to shift into the internal core and manifest from there than to manifest from the external core. Because from the external core, we we already automatically manifesting. So that's a big question here that has to be, everyone has to ask themselves that question. I think that's a responsibility of every individual today on this planet that feels as a responsible family member that really wants the betterment of humanity. That's a main question to ask yourself. Yeah, right out of the gate, you know, just uh, every morning when you get up, you know, what are your first thoughts? You know, am I manifesting a good day? It kind of starts uh, with intention. I mean, you manifest your intention. If I wake up in the morning and I look over and see my lovely wife and I think, wow, I sure am happy to be waking up with her this morning. Like, that is great. So I want to, and I'm going to start my day off with the intent on increasing our level of intensity of love and affection and support. And that's easy. That's just, that's on the autopilot. Like my inner eternal core just is set on that thing. But it's easy for people to get knocked off that track. Like you see, I see, you see it everywhere. And it's most unfortunate. Especially uh, even in very uh, interpersonal relationships with like co-workers or uh, acquaintances. It's easy for somebody to say something off the cuff or you interpret it wrong or you misperceive it. So all of a sudden now you're manifesting that that person is being a prick. Oh, I don't like him. I don't want to have this open space when there really is no reason to have open space. You're just manifesting or perceiving something that may or may not have actually really happened. 
So then we just go into the, uh, go back to the core. Take a deep breath. Go, all right, what am I manifesting today? How am I doing that? Am I doing it? Am I doing everything possible that my thoughts and actions are manifesting something good for myself and for the ones that I love that ripple out into the broader humanity and the broader world? If, you, if we can live by that and practice that and what we have said so many times and especially in the course that we just completed is the art and practice of just being aware. Be aware. If you're aware of yourself being negative and focusing on negative things and all of a sudden you're going to manifest those negative things, where you, if you can catch yourself, just kind of nudge you back on over here to positivity and hey, that you can go down either path. It's your decision. And you can manifest whatever you want. That's your decision. But you have to be aware of what places you put yourself into. If you want to live in a ball of anxiety and fear, then all right, we'll go live in there. Enjoy. Have a good time. Or a bad time. Whatever it is you want. But uh, you're manifesting that. And I believe firmly that if we can do what you suggest and focus on the inner core of our being, of our individual self, and work on that, it's a lot easier to maneuver the broader roads and detours and all these crazy things happening in the world. And if we can operate from here and let that be our spotlight going forward, then I think all of humanity has a really good chance of making the world infinitely better. What? What took you to get to your core? For you to know uh, what you know? Uh, what, what got you there? What got I, you there? Uh, that's a hell of a question. Yeah, that's a hell of a question. <laughs> I, I was born um, always growing up with this gnawing feeling inside me that. Um, I'm an orphan. I always felt, even though I had beautiful parents, did the best they could, um, bless them. Uh, but I always felt that I'm an orphan, that I'm somehow in a marketplace and that I lost my mother's hand. And suddenly I find myself in between all these people all alone. And I don't know who can I trust and wh wh where, where to go. And that took me, and I'm, of course, I'm speaking metaphorically, right, right, right. Uh, because I had a, a home and I had parents that did the best they could. So feeling that way made you dig deep. Feeling that and way always put me on a quest, always right. put me on a search. I was never buying into what was presented to me as reality. I always knew that something was missing, mm -hmm. something was seriously wrong. <laughs> Fell to me, okay? I was never submitting, I was never conforming to the system and to the social norms. Okay. I always felt that something is, is off and I was always on a search. I always looked deeper, I always were looking, I would always go to nature, I was always a rebel, a rebel as a young man. And that took me ultimately on a spiritual path to explore deeper uh, realms of truth. I think that is a good example of the how things manifest. You did not accept the social construct of what was being presented to you and by growing up in Israel. You didn't buy it. You didn't buy into that uh, belief, much like I didn't buy into a lot of the social constructs of living here in this country. Those manifest themselves into Hey there, hey, there has to be something more. We, we start thinking, all right, this is very superficial. Uh, how do we dig a little deeper? You know, when we start, that, that is a, a wonderful example of how our minds 
begin to manifest, I'm missing something, what is it? And all of a sudden we start to discover and find it. It's a perfect example. And by the way, I've never stopped. I'm still in that process of creating this memory fact. It's a, it's, a, it's a constant inner inquisition. But I wanted to ask you, brother, because we spoke before, and you so beautifully said, uh, as you as you shared with me about your story, that you, you know, yeah, I, was I, was giving giving you, I was giving you meat. Right. right. Most people are not ready for meat. <laughs> we stopped somewhere that means you made a very, very valid and important point that I'd like to bring if you will allow me, See. and maybe ask you to maybe extend on that a little bit, because you spoke about, when we ended the conversation, you spoke about um, in the past. Uh, uh, an identity crisis that when you were on your search mm -hmm. as you were engaging with the social construct, you started to realize that people don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. And that there is actually, if you really want to change or make some major change that is meaningful, you're actually going through an identity crisis. And that's all, scary for people. At all times, even when you are woke, you still get awakened. You feel me saying what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So even when you know what you know, Things still come about, and you're like, "How is it about? It? How is it happening?" And I, I, I graduated from this already. I completed this level, and I started finding out, like, "Okay, so I know what's going on. I got no control over it, so I'm not gonna hedge. Why? I'm, I want to know what to a core solidly." And the answer always came from within me. I was like 12, and I would. Get ready to ask God something. And I would say, and it wouldn't even come out of my mouth. I couldn't even get it out. And the answer would come. And it started happening constantly. And I was like, hold up. Like, how is this happening? Because I know I didn't know the answer before. Or else I wouldn't try to ask. And I started recognizing, hey, everything you need is inside of you. You, you got it. Just continue to have your soul and your spirit connect your mind. Image. That's a good point of another great example of manifesting. Yeah, you manifest what it is that you need, what you want, what you're searching for. So when you're praying, you couldn't even get your prayer out, and then bam, there's the answer. So, okay, so about praying. So this happened about 12 years ago, too. So I was praying for knowledge. I, I, you know, I was intelligent, but I wasn't as intelligent as I wanted to be. And I was praying, God, you know, Give me knowledge, man. And my grandmother, she helped me. She said, hey, dude, what do you pray about? And I said, Grandma, I pray for knowledge. And she said, oh, and she said, you praying for a lifetime of hell. And I said, <laughs> she said, if you want to know things, then you got to go through something to know it. She said, don't pray for knowledge. Pray for wisdom. Wisdom guides knowledge. Wisdom helps you say, okay, not only do I know it, but I ain't got to be there and I can be on the phone and tell somebody else exactly what to do and keep them from going through what I went through. So getting the wisdom behind my knowledge helped me have the discernment, which gave me, gave me a pride of understanding. So I started understanding a lot of things at a young age, which I hate. <laughs> well, that, that is a, uh, you know, whatever we think, that was a good grandma, first of all. You, you said you want knowledge, and, uh, and she helped you manifest what you really were after, which was wisdom. Mm -hmm. And that's what we're talking about, manifestation. So manifestation is, uh, it is a very interesting thing because thoughts are things and thoughts are powerful. And if you just dive in and tap and crack open that core, uh, the, the people right around you can feel what you need the most in your own manifestations without you even realizing it. Correct. Mm -hmm. And no grandma saying, hey, I need knowledge so much, you need wisdom. Well, my grandmother was on her own, own journey of breaking from religion. Because we come from, you know, Southern and Baptist and Pentecost and all that stuff, you know? Right. And uh, she, my grandmother was the smartest, and she's still very intelligent. But I never liked the fact that she never knew me, I don't believe. She had her own church, but she couldn't be the preacher because she was a woman. And I never understood that. The preacher would be preaching, and my grandma would like correct him in the middle of it and tell him, like, you know, <laughs> and I would be looking. And uh, as a child, I would sit in and uh, hold counsel with them. The other kids would be outside, like on Easter and things, right? They'd be outside playing. 
but I was sitting there and I was listening to all the older people talk. And I didn't get it until I got about 18 or 19 and started getting in trouble. And I said, hey, how did you understand all that at a young age? And I started thinking about how my grandmother guided me in the right direction. So if you want things in life, right, you don't really necessarily have to ask God for anything. It's, it's already there for you. You just gotta, you just gotta dig deep inside of you, and you gotta know exactly. Let me see how to do this. Okay, so you gotta know what to ask for if you're asking for it, and it's gotta line up with the design purpose. You are absolutely right, and we are about out of time on our cameras, <laughs> so that is uh, something very important for us to consider is all of the things that we think about can and do manifest themselves out into the world, whether they're positive or negative. It is very important that we contemplate our thoughts and how they are forced out. So, Gil, where can people find you? The people of the real dot com. Not that, just people of the real. People of the real. People of the real. People of the real dot com. One word. Welcome. It's a lot to explore. You can contact me, us, and uh, we can dive deeper into some great uh, adventures. And of course, the mystics of Texas dot com. And we are very happy that you're here. Just remember, if you joined us this long, we are having a July third pre-July 4th party to have a theatrical performance of the Declaration of Independence and uh, a bunch of other fun things. So if y'all like to perform some of your founding father's documents, yeah, come out and have a good time. All right, see y'all next time.